OK, so last time we did the T2G1 EG1 configuration. And we were able to get these terms just by finding the possible spins and then adding that to all the possible uh, orbital symmetries. So that was really easy. So here is what happens when things get a little bit more complicated. So let's consider now this higher energy EG2 configuration, W occupied EG. OK, so again, with our two electrons, we can have s equals 1 or s equals 0. That's great, right? Again, two, two, two electrons, we can have them both spin up, or we can have them paired. That's simple enough. Um, to find the orbital symmetries, we again should do the direct products. So we know that EG times EG equals, let me make sure I have the right answer. It's going to be A1G plus A2G plus EG. I'm going to point out that we never get a u term because g times g is always garata, right? Even times even is even. So don't ever get a u term. You know you're wrong. OK. Um, so the problem is if we did it this way, where we just add the spin terms, we could potentially get something like, oh, why can't my answer just be singlet a1g plus triplet a1g plus singlet a2g plus triplet a2g plus singlet eg plus triplet eg. And then so overall, this would give us, let's see, 1 plus 3 plus 1 plus 3 is 8 plus 2 plus 6. Oh, wait, no, 2 plus 9. So 11. No, I can't do math. Wait, 6 plus 2 is 8 plus 8. So this should be 16. 16 microstates. But if we actually consider how many ways we can populate an EG orbital with two electrons. So here are my EG orbitals. Uh, we could have, let's see, one here. We could have one here. We could have one here. We could have one here. Those are all our s equals 0 states. Um, and then we could have this triplet state. We could have this triplet state. So overall, we actually only have six possible states. Only six. And that's because uh, this, this multiplication term only doesn't consider the Pauli exclusion principle. So this is an x out because of Pauli. Pauli. So what I mean is that this multiplication uh, will also consider states like this, where they're both spin up electrons in the same orbital, which we know can't happen. Right? That's violating the exclusion principle. So because of that, we cannot use the simple multiplication method and the simple spin state determination method. The poly exclusion, pr the poly exclusion principle was not a problem for this T2G1, EG1 orbital because there's no way for any these two electrons to share the same quantum numbers. So as long as your, your electrons are different orbitals, you're fine. You can do this method. But if they're the same orbitals, then we have to worry because we are missing, we have to get rid of some of these states. So what this means is that some of these states over here are not real. But the rest of this, some of the, these microstates, these six microstates, have to be described by like a few of these terms. So we have to figure out which ones that we can cancel out and which ones we can't. Um, there's another way to do it, which we'll do in class. But in this video, we'll cover descent and symmetry. And the reason why descent and symmetry is that the reason that we have this problem multiplication is because we have uh, this degenerate orbitals um, that end up messing us up. So the first step in descendant symmetry is we want to reduce our symmetry. That's obviously. So here, we're going to go from our EG orbital, which we know in a ligand field theory is x squared minus y squared z squared. So you need to find uh, lower it to a symmetry that's related to octahedral, but is of a lower symmetry subgroup, so that we no longer have EG orbitals. Um, but also have, to split up, split, also have to split up this degeneracy, otherwise it's not going to work. So I don't know the answer. So I'm going to go from octahedral to D4H. 
And then now, in d for h, we have our dz squared, or sorry, dx squared minus y squared is b1g, and then dz squared is a1g. So then now, step two is add electrons, find symmetry. OK, so for this, in this D4H, we can have, if we start thinking about our two electro, uh, having two electrons, I'm not going to draw a spin. We could have electrons like this. We could have electrons like this. And we could have electrons like this. And I'm going to label my orbitals, don't worry. All right, this was our B1G, A1G, et cetera, et cetera. So here, I'm not showing spin. So in this example, this orbital symmetry is going to be A1G times B1G, which, got, which equals B1G. And then because we have two electrons, this could be triplet or singlet. So this will be, uh, let me write this up in yellow up here, singlet, triplet. Right. So we could have both of them spin, uh, unpaired to spin, or we could have them paired spin. So those are our triplet, B1, singlet, B1G. In this case, we have two electrons in A1G. They ha if they're in the same orbital, this is a singly, singly degenerate orbital. It's got to be singlet A1G. And then here we have two electrons in the B1G orbital. So this actually also has to be singlet A1G because uh, it's B1G times B1G. I'll leave it to you to figure out that that's also A1G, right? This is B1G cross B1G, or direct product. So that's how we found it. And then here, so we're, we're all set. We have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six microstates. So now that we have these terms, then part C is we go up, raise symmetry. Um, and so um, there, there are actually tables of what well, symmetries go to which if you're comparing between D4H and octahedral and any other geometry. So I'll attach that to the website on Sakai, and you can. It's easy to correlate different symmetries in higher symmetry um, groups to lower symmetry groups. So don't worry, you, need, you don't need to do this by yourself. So we raise symmetry. So our terms that we have are, let's see, singlet B1G plus singlet A1G plus singlet A1G plus triplet B1G. Keep in mind that a triplet term cannot combine with a singlet term, right? They have to, the spin states have to remain the same. So we know that B1G by itself um, goes to in, so this is again in D4H. In octahedral, the triplet B1G term goes to triplet uh, A2G, I believe. Yes, triplet A2G. And then here's where things get interesting. So we have to, these terms have to be ones that correspond to our multiplication terms. So here's triplet A2G. Uh, and then let's, we have to have either an A1G or EG. So we, we can't have two A1Gs because we don't have two A1Gs here. So we could have one of these A1, singlet A1Gs go to singlet A1G. And then uh, I'll point out here that if you look at the table, uh, EG, which is one term that we have, could is a combination of B1G and A1G. So together, these combine to singlet EG. So in octahedral, our final states are singlet EG plus singlet A1G plus triplet A2G. And by Hund's rule, this triplet A2G has to be the lowest in energy. So our and these two are both singlet states. So the higher orbital symmetry is lower energy. So our final ordering of our three states is going to be triplet A2G, singlet EG, and singlet A1G. So this is how we can use descent and symmetry to kind of overcome the problems that we got from the Pauli exclusion principle when we are multiplying our degenerate orbitals out to get to our final uh, terms that arise from this configuration. Okay. So in class, we will actually do the T2G2 configuration. So I'll let you fill in this part of your table on your own um, after class. 
and uh, also give you like another shortcut to kind of address this problem as we're trying to find our different terms and our excited states. Okay, great. <laughs>